Are you into natural bodies? Or are you team BBL? Or does it even matter? Who really cares? Cue, Cue the, the intro. bringing it to you guys yes. uh we're excited for this one because guess what it's super bowl super bowl weekend, weekend guys it's valentine's weekend right. it's black history month still it's always black history you feel me um but yeah guys this is episode seven and like she said she's Danny the doll i'm sophie joe and you are watching sister sound off Okay, anyways, <laughs> guys, we have a great show in store for mm -hmm. you. Guys, we've got some good stuff. But, of course, as we started off asking you guys the question, are you team natural or BBL or whatever the hell? Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> We're going to get into it with one of our first segments and new segments called A, a Sip, Sip with, with Sis. Sis. Let's cheers to that. Okay. Yes. Of course, this is where we sip our favorite drink, where guys at home can sit with us as we sit here and have a deep discussion on shit that matters. Exactly. No, uh, sis, please tell the people uh, what we are discussing today. We're about to break down the um, obsession and infatuation with BBL culture and aesthetics and lifestyle, but yes. also the natural community. Um, we're going to be just talking about body, body, image. body image in America period so let's get into the discussion yeah so first off let me just say for our disclaimer we do not bash nor um judge anyone who has gotten work done or uh don't believe in work yeah. we're a team either or however and i'm sure some of you agree it has gotten cray cray out here some of y'all are the lulu okay <laughs> with these it was my Ricky Thompson voice, the Lulu. <laughs> now, now let's let's keep it a bean, okay? I think I am a little more forgiving and less judgmental when it comes to the girls getting a body's done. I think Danielle, Danny the dog. I mean, you are open, but I think you. I just don't like when it gets crazy. Like, get your get your body done, get the work done. Okay, cool, but. I just hate when y'all go overboard. Some of y'all out here looking like ants. Yeah. Like. KFC leg upside down. Yeah. You've got, you know, people who, you know, they've got, they've gone to the right people and, or they're working out. So we're keeping everything intact. Like Bernice Burgos, um, who looks great. But then you got some where it's just like. Horrible. What happened? Right. <laughs> and I want to kind of get into what is the obsession with the BBL culture? Um, and in my personal opinion, while yes, you know, it's making girls, some girls look really great, but with that, having a certain look comes a certain lifestyle that's sometimes offered to you mm -hmm. on a silver platter. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it a buck. Yeah. When it comes down to men in entertainment, rappers, uh, athletes, entertainers, yeah, they do like women who are shaped with that very curvaceous body. Um, there's even a certain style of hair like a bust down middle part a certain way that they make up there's a lifestyle that comes with the bbl yeah aesthetic okay it's like a whole nother era of life now G -wag that and the, the new era of women have created you know in this new society and yes. like so i'm saying you know open to it it's fine because we do believe in women's rights and women doing whatever the hell they want to do with their bodies and we mean that in all aspects okay never moving to texas <laughs> So, you know, if you feel like, oh, you, you love your body, but you, you know, maybe you're getting older or you, your body just isn't how it used to be after your kid, or you simply just want a little touch up here and there, girl, do it, go for it, that's your problem. 
But when it starts to get obsessive or it starts to get dangerous, because there have been reports and stories mm -hmm. of women actually dying, people yeah. like dying on the table, dying in the back alley. Yeah, you know, because all kinds of things can go wrong. You're gonna go under surgery, so being put to sleep, or you know, that's dealing with a lot of health things, organs, all like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so you have to be really careful things. and do it for the right reasons. Yes, do it for the right reasons, not because of you know, someone else or being peer pressure. We're in the day of social media, so we know how, you know, just influencing yeah. social media can be. Even myself, you know, social media is a blessing and a curse. Okay? Yeah, like I was just saying that too. It was like the two main, I'm not gonna, yeah, the two main reasons, whether y'all want to agree or not, that I, I'll say young, younger girls or women get these surgeries. Some of them is for themselves, you know, but one of the main two is influence with wanting to impress the men. And then it's peer pressure from society telling them, oh, you're not pretty enough. Oh, the face card is giving, but what's going on with the body? You know, right. Oh, you shaped like a little boy. It's 12-year-old boy. Which, right. I mean, hey, you know, uh, I think some women who are, uh, who get the surgeries too young, it's like, girl, your body might have naturally looked like that yeah. if you would have waited a few more years, you know. Yeah. But also what I want to talk about with body image, not just BBL girls, okay, but also just how America mainly, I'm, I'm, I know it's probably all over the world, but I'm mainly speaking on America because that's where we at, okay. Mm -hmm. um, just America's obsession with body image, period, when it comes to how women look. Men, too. I've been hearing about these rappers yeah. going to get surgeries done. Yes. Six what? pack sketched on and etch a sketch. Yeah, we so. heard it. <laughs> we heard it's getting real stressful for y'all out here too. Somebody right. putting the pressure on, on y'all too. Y'all gotta up keep you. Uh, but no, so I just wanted to kind of get into like being too small, being too skinny. Like once again, you almost have to be perfect to be accepted to get ahead in life. You have to look a certain way. Yeah. Um, and this even goes, guys. For example, of course, when singer Lizzo first came out even now she received a lot of criticism and backlash just for being big you know and I'm saying that because that's what she said about herself as well like yeah she shouldn't be on stage with no leotard or her double chin if she make one more move the stage gonna cave in all kinds of hate just comments. so disrespectful and like petty. because you you big you can't you can't chase your dreams and be oh, a singer no 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 they'll, they'll give you that bullshit um compliment when you're that size Oh my God, she's so confident. Like, oh my God. It's such an ass backwards compliment. Like, oh my God, her confidence is so great. Man, like, like you know, why would I not be confident? Yeah, like you don't see Beyonce or Riri on stage. It's like, oh my God, girl, she killed it. But did you see that confidence? confidence speaking like, through? It's like, come on. Like, just, if you can. <laughs> right, like, she's talented. Like, let's forget for a second how huge she is. No, not like that, but how yeah. she, you she's know, her size. size woman. Right, yeah. but her songs are popping people love her but then also on the other hand of that guys we have remember when the recent pictures came out mm. what a couple months ago of ariana, ariana grande, grande yeah and how you know thin she appeared in the picture I mean, and, she's too little oh my god she i hope she's not sick something's wrong i'm praying for her. like you just you, you can't win and, i mean yeah god forbid if you're sick i mean it's you would think we learned our lesson with chadwick chadwick bozeman he was sick he's. And he was so disturbed he, about the by the comments. He actually had to take the video he made down. Like, come on, people. You know, so it's just... And I think, to me, we've gotten so accustomed and conditioned to only seeing one standard of beauty that we forgot. Like, I've had people question me. Like, I post a picture. Like, oh, who'd you go to? Oh, your body was like... And I'm like, no, dude, this is all me. Yeah, like, that's what I this, was also This really say. what I look like. But y'all... We're so used, used to, to now. I'm saying nowadays. Yeah. That when someone naturally has a nice body... You don't know. We automatically think they lie. Oh, she knows she lies. She knows she has uh -uh, some work. That work... Like, people... <laughs> if we, we're one-track minded now. Yeah. So it's like, oh my God. We can't even tell real from fake. And, and, and fake is fine. Real is fine. Is what we're saying. But... The standard of beauty, yeah. I, what do you think? Do you think it's only going to get like worse from here? Or well, maybe? I also think a lot of things runs in trends, just like fashion. It's trendy. Hairstyles are trendy. A certain body shape, the um, BBL, yeah. like very trendy. But if you now, if we're talking mainly black culture, definitely heavy on the BBL body shape fixation. And I think that's because a lot of back in the day in the nineties. 
a lot of women were naturally that way anyways. Yeah. But now it's just way more enhanced. But if you look at our ops, not the ops, sorry, white people, right now <laughs> being super duper uber skinny is back in. They're not, because at first we went through the Kim K phase. The white girls was trying to be thick. Now, Ozempic is then, taking over. Yeah, and then before Kim K, it was like that J-Lo era where everybody, like, back then, her ass was huge. the ass everybody wanted. It was huge. And now you look at it, it's like, girl, girl. because you've got all, people have double, <laughs> try, I don't even know the word, try, try, Why, drupal. drupal, that size now, so, yeah. yeah. But I think now... Once again, like I said, it really depends on the culture. But right now, everybody is wanting to be super duper uber skinny in the more white Hollywood. Um, people are shoot abusing Ozempic and shortening the supply for people like me who actually need it, <laughs> and they're getting it because they're rich and famous. They can just buy it. But also, it is helping a lot of people. I just don't like how the celebrities who don't really need it are taking advantage of it to get to be a size double zero. Yeah, it's like <sighs> once it's again. America, we are hooked on body image. Yeah, we. It's like beauty sales, sex sales, yes. all the sales. I will so spend we, nine thousand dollars a shot so I can look a certain way. Yeah, because of, you know, and then like the industry, that's another added pressure. My PR team told me if I don't drop this twelve pounds, it's over for me. Or if I don't, if I don't get this, this ass shot done, because they're saying my butt ain't. Doing Love it for, for it, they can't market me because I'm I'm coming in too natural. They're gonna drop me from the label. <laughs> like you know, it's it's crazy. It the is. pressure, the pressure of just to be perfect, sex to be sexy, appealing to men, but not too too. Um, you know, yeah, appealing to women. Or, or we don't want to intimidate women, but we have to be appealing enough for men. Right. You know what? I think this is a perfect segue for our next segment. Oh uh, yes, guys. Because Men do not get half the damn backlash that we do when it comes to trying to, um, what, what, trying to, what is the word I'm looking for? Accommodate and make society look at us the way they want us to. Yes. And okay. yeah. we're talking about, <laughs> we're about to get into guys, pop culture biggest <laughs> moment. This is where me and Danny the doll break down some super duper crazy events that happened maybe a while ago, maybe even recent. We're talking about all things that had pop culture shook. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some of this stuff was before social media, honey. Yeah. So since it's Super Bowl weekend, we and of course, you know, we're talking about body image. Yes. Let's get into the beautiful body of Miss Janet Jackson and her incident at the 2004 Super Bowl with Justin Timberlake. Cry me, cry me. Mm -hmm. For all of my people. Before Gen Z, no shade to you, because you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. That, hold up, because now I take offense. Yes, if you didn't know. She did, she not didn't look remember. It, but I'm Gen Z slash millennial. She I'm right even, on the cuts. She didn't even remember what I was talking about. Guys, if you don't, what, like, let's get She this. heard of the story, talking about, she didn't know the details. So, yeah, hey. I didn't know the details. I'm, I was only 10, child. Yeah, so she was I was only 10. Look, looking for the, that story even. <laughs> but guys, we are about to break down Pop Watch the Biggest Moment, like they all said, the year 2004, Super Bowl in Houston. I'm not sure where, but yeah, when uh, Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake had the infamous rip-off section. Yes. Sessions. And this was a time where Justin was popping, and of course, Janet, the icon. Two pop stars coming together. They both had hits, and everything was going great, you know? They yes. was killing it. And then... It, towards the end, the very last end, I'm sure y'all remember, Justin said the famous words, I'm going to have you naked by the end of this song, and he had her damn naked. Boom! The shirt ripped off, and I don't know if a lot of people noticed at the time, but Janet had her nipples pierced, so that made it even worse. Oh, whoa! <laughs> it's like, you're going to see my boob, and you're going to get a little S&M action, 50 Shades of Grey. Lord. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And so apparently this was such a big thing because yeah. it was supposed to be an accident. But the reason that it's still popping now, even to this day, yeah. the topic is still hot, is because what Je um, Justin Timberlake didn't get as much backlash as Janet Jackson. He didn't. Yeah, like they talked about him, but Janet was the one that got ridiculed and took the heat. And a lot of people felt some type of way about Justin because Justin. He didn't back her up like he should have. He did not, you know, he went on and his career expanded, 
while Janice for just what stood I, still and he for a community like he didn't say enough. They didn't do shit to him. And that from was, what I read, he went on to win a Grammy that year. Oh yeah, he and went on to win a Grammy that year, and they denied Janet from the Grammys and any other awards. Y'all think that year, like they mm -hmm. disinvited her from everything. But her. it's also so crazy to think back then. Yeah, that was what twenty years ago, and now like. If someone's boo popped out, it would be kind of a big deal, but it yeah. wouldn't be that major because now we're so used to seeing over sexualized things. Oh like, yeah, like everybody's in a thong. Everybody, right you know. Yeah. But back then, I guess it was a big deal. Yeah. Now, let me tell you my little opinion. Okay, I kind of think that it was planned. I don't really know if I think it's a hundred. It was a hundred percent accident. I think. But I, I think it was easier for people to put the blame on Janet if it really was an accident because of her sexual image already. I think she did Playboy. Mm. She had like a, not a sexual image, but she had, all men wanted her. She was yeah, a sultry you know, type of woman, yeah, you know? Janet's always expressed her, her sexuality. sexuality. She, was always, she was always a sex symbol. That's what I'm saying. So I think it was easy for people to put it on her like, oh, she knows she probably, they have, this was not an accident. Yeah. Now, see, for me, I've seen the documentary, plus I remember how it happened back then. It really was an incident. She explains it in her documentary. If you guys haven't seen that yet, check it out on Lifetime. Um, when he, he was only supposed to rip off, like, the sleeve or something, and he grabbed it too hard, and it actually ripped off her thing because... And, of course, she's on stage. She was startled for a second. You can see when she was startled. And then immediately when they cut or whatever, or the lights went low... They ran backstage and they covered her like immediately with a towel. And she, and she was she had her head down. She was so humiliated. So I don't really think you can fake that. But I think what happened was because her and Justin, they're such performer. Like they're they've been doing this since for, since they were kids. So they know how to like even even when something like that happens, you you still you know you gotta keep the show must go. The on. show's gotta keep going on. And so of course they they still stood there. But God knows what was going through her mind because immediately, like, they ran back there. And I remember Janet was saying, like, she was so sorry. I'm so sorry, Janet. I didn't mean it. Whatever. They got the towel on her. You know, it was like, oh, God. And then, of course, the next day, it was like 9-11. It was like somebody cracked. <laughs> it was like 9-11 all over again. It don't was say that because people get so offended. So oh, we yeah. don't mean, like, we, we don't know mean, it was a horrible time in America. Yeah. Wow. We don't mean, like, the tragedy that they, when I the say. Press. Yeah, when I say when it it was like nine eleven, I mean the craziness surrounding the incident. Right, the media coverage. Yeah, like she was in every new tabloid, and of course you remember this was before Instagram, TikTok, so it was crazy. Now the reason I said I think maybe it was planned, you know, because why would like okay the end of the song says I'm gonna have you naked by the end of this song. What was he planning to rip? Because the arm wasn't going to be a, a shock value or like ripping a, a, the shoulder off. Or maybe I like, was thinking like, Ooh. yeah. Like, what was, what I, was think, supposed to I think what it was, was she had, she may have had on like something like a, um, like an undershirt or something like underneath that he, that he was supposed to rip off and it would show like a little bra or something. But I don't think it meant to show the whole foot. I think maybe he was supposed to rip off and just show like a little piece of the bra or something. Mm -hmm. They didn't mean to expose the whole thing. But then again, like she said, we don't know. Yeah, we really, yeah. What we do know is, um, and like we said back then, you know, I'm sure it was a shock, but the way they did her was just Dirty. death up. And we can, now, I wasn't really, really around back then, but from what I've seen with my research, like everything else in America, I'm sure it has to do with her being a woman and also her being an right. African-American woman. Yes. Of course, she's going to receive the most scrutiny and get ridiculed the most compared to this white man who America loves. Now, recently, well, not recently, but maybe last year, Justin, not last year. I think he apologized three years before then, but he did, you know, publicly apologize to Janet and all of Again. that. Yeah. So now with the Super Bowl coming up, y'all know our... Usher, Usher, I'm trying to say it. Usher. Usher. Usher, is Usher baby. Performing. And I'm so excited because Usher is, to me, like, and I ain't even gonna hold you. I ain't gonna lie to you. For a second, I kind of forgot about Usher's talent until he's been doing his Las Vegas residency. Mm -hmm. Of course, like, I know he's talented, but I kind of forgot. But now that I'm thinking back, Usher has one 
heck of a catalog. He really they can does. dance, he can sing. He still I mean, got his face, no shade. Right. I'm not saying face, I mean, no, he still looks, looks nice. He's aging like fine wine, honey. So the, I think this is going to be a great performance, and I'm sure he's going to bring some people out. You know what? Me and Danny that all was talking about the other day, how crazy would it be if Usher, Wait. during his halftime performance, Chris or no, brought out Janet Jackson. Oh, okay. <laughs> the reason why I say that because there is one main connect between Usher and Janet Jackson. If you guys think long and hard before I answer, you're not going to guess because I couldn't either. She had Jermaine Dupri. If y'all didn't know, Usher and Jermaine Dupri are super close. Of course, we know um, Jermaine Dupri and Janet mm -hmm. Jackson used to date, and I think they low key back talking. Okay. So who knows? Maybe he put a bug in his ear. But how crazy would that be if Usher brought out Janet Jackson? Yes, because I really feel like. With the way the Super Bowl did her, she deserves a second damn chance. She needs her moment. She is still the icon. She's still Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. And <laughs> do they have a song together? Her, her and Usher. Usher? No, no. We gonna make it? No. Oh, that's J Cole. Oh well, even if they don't, it will be cool if, see? Yeah. if they brought them out. So we will. We're looking forward to seeing the Super Bowl. Just the halftime, I could care less about the game because I already know they could have put, be putting the camera on Taylor Swift the whole time. Like, Hi. oh my gosh, please. Anyways, guys, let's mosey <laughs> into our next segment. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite segments, guys. Say oh. it every time. It's Housewife, Housewife Hot, Hot Minute. Minute. Super excited. This is where Danny the Dog gives me, Sophie Joe, 60 seconds. And only 60. To cover the latest episode of whatever Housewife show I'm watching at the moment. Right now, I'm going to be breaking down... Uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Before we get into it, guys, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, okay? It's free. And if you guys are listening on Apple uh, Podcasts and Spotify, be sure to give us a like and follow us on Instagram. So yeah. Sound off underscore. Yeah. If you can't catch us on YouTube, go ahead and listen to us in your car on the way to work. Tag your girlfriends, tag your boyfriends, whoever. We would love the support and we're going to keep this thing rolling all year long, baby. Yeah, buddy. All right, sis. Let's you get into guys. Housewife Hot Minute. Ready? Yes. And the clock starts now. All right, guys. So Sutton, the girls are in Spain for a girl's trip. Sutton releases her best friend, Merce's ashes, over some body of water, which is a sad moment. But she also lets the ladies let go and release some of their issues, their hurt, and their trauma. Uh, Erica Jane shares how she was disappointed and hurt that the ladies did not support her during her legal issues with her ex, Tom Girardi, even though she kind of came out on top. What she was saying kind of low-key was true, and no one has really issued an apology. So she's in her feelings about that. 35 seconds left on the clock. Um, Kyle dis discusses her marital issues yet again with Mauricio. At this point, just get a divorce, because the man is obviously cheating. Sorry, he is kind of fine to be an old man. And Kyle, you didn't turn into a... Lesbian lover, dare I say? I don't know. We'll see more in the next episode. Lastly, um, oh yeah, also, Mauricio acts like he doesn't care, and Cal wants him to show a little bit more, like, we're, we've been married for forever. Show that you care about the marriage issues that we're having. That's all I have for the episode, because guess what? I made it within Woo! 60 seconds! <laughs> Usually she be struggling, y'all, but she did make it, so that was good. Woo! I didn't put that many notes down, that's why. Yeah. I only got the most important things from the episode. Guys, yeah. next week I'm probably going to be covering <laughs> the latest episode of Real Housewives of Potomac, so make sure you tune into that, too. Yeah, so I'm... All right, guys, so moving on to that, speaking of moves, we got somebody else who's um, making, making moves. Yeah. <laughs> this is a segment that we call... Who's making moves? Oh, with your bright yeah. harmony. <laughs> it's yes, called talent. It's called being born with it. Born? No, what is it? Born with it, not bought. Uh, yes. It's in me, not on me. Shout out to Nipsey. Well, rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. Um, Marathon continues. Yes. So, anyways, guys, sorry. <laughs> and this segment is Who's Making Moves. This is just where me and Danny the dog like to shout shine out, big up, shine a light on people who are just doing good yes because with all of the shitty things going on in the world every once in a while you gotta bring in some positivity, positivity. Oh, that's right so speaking of positivity this person this black owned business man yes we are talking about none other than mr brandon, brandon blackwood, blackwood. <laughs> the 29 year old from new york new york hey, city boy. okay city of dreams so guys if you have been looking under rock then you know Brandon Blackwood, first, he's been designing since middle school, from what I've read. Oh, wow. Yeah, but he's gotten his shine 
as of within the last couple years, yeah. especially during the Black Lives Matter and George Floyd movement, with his um, very famous trunk bags in systemic racism. That's yeah. what really got him kind of buzzing. Yeah, and I, first of all, I love Brandon Blackwood. And, well, his, his all of his, pro, not products, but, you know, designs. all the things he's made, his purses, his designs, his, the different styles. I've got about at least 20 bags saved that I ain't bought yet, but they are they on my list. Okay. <laughs> when I get the taxes come back, oh, <laughs> I'm getting my bag. Okay. <laughs> they are too cute. I mean, you got, he has one guy's in denim. Okay. I got oh, a whole yes. denim outfit, so I've got to get the denim um, box he bag. Has he Day has a Valentine's out. Day yeah. collection collab with She Ra from. Um, TikTok. If y'all know Sprinkle Sprinkle, Miss Sprinkle Sprinkle herself, she's been she's done a collab with Brandon Blackwood for Valentine's Day. Super excited about that. Yeah. Um, I love Miss Sprinkle Sprinkle. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the design so far. They were super cute. So I definitely think he's gonna do some big numbers with with this um with this collection. Yes, super he cute. has um now not only of course he started off making handbags, but now he has merged into making shoes. And also gowns. Let me just name a few of the celebs um, who he has worked with. Oh, so yes. he had, well, okay. He's designed actual dresses for Megan Thee Stallion and Shirley Ralph. Is it Cheryl or Cheryl? Shirley Cheryl. Ralph. Yeah. And people who have been spotted with his cute shrunk handbags. Of course, Queen B, Beyonce, supporting the black business, oh. okay? And also the talented and beautiful Serena Williams. Oh, yes. So, he, and even without the celebs, the bags are fire, okay? So, yeah. hey. And, and, and now you got shoes? Come on. Yeah, The shoot. only BS I need from a man are bags and shoes. Ooh, I like <laughs> yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That's a quote. Cool. All right, so that is, shout out to Brandon Blackwood. Hopefully, one day we can meet. Maybe we can have him as a guest on here. Maybe yes. we can do a collab. How does that sound? Okay, so this is off with Brandon, Brandon. Blackwood. BB and SS. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Brandon. Congrats on all, all of your success. success and accomplishments, and we cannot wait to see more. Yes. All right, y'all. Guess what? We are almost, almost at the end of our show. Before we finish out the show with, oh yeah, we on the right track. Oh, before we finish out the show with positivity, we want to remind you guys to, if y'all have topics that y'all want us to discuss, how we did yeah. the. Uh, BBL and natural thing, let us know in the YouTube comments or you can DM us on Instagram at sister sound off underscore. underscore. Yes. Put that underscore under there. <laughs> yes, guys. So please let us know. And you can follow us on our Facebook page as well under sister sound off. Yes, everywhere sister sound off. Boo. Yeah, so let us know, guys. We would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And yeah. Yeah, so we are about to get into Danny's dose. dose. And this is just a segment where we like to, Danielle likes to sprinkle some positivity mm -hmm. for the rest of the week. Yes, just something to take with you to start you off. And this one is, one, two, three, it's four words, y'all. But it's four words that is to the point and it's something that everybody needs, especially if you're going through a tough time right now. Because mm -hmm. not everybody's having a great Super Bowl weekend or maybe you're going through some stuff personally with Valentine's Day. I don't know. But it's this. Cry and keep going. Cry and still keep going. Okay? It's simple as that. You cry, pout, scream if you need to, vent, whatever. But whatever you do, please keep going. Okay? Because your life doesn't stop for anybody. doesn't stop for any obstacle. Nothing. So... You know, cry, get whatever you need to get out, but still keep going, still keep fighting. Mm -hmm. Because all while you're crying and you're feeling broken, God is right there with you. So no matter how you're feeling, what you're going through, keep moving, keep pushing. It's tough right now, but it will get better for you. This so. too shall pass. Yes. I keep going. <laughs> that was so that, yeah, so that was just a little positivity for you guys. And hey, shout out to the Aquariuses because it's Aquarius season. What? Big Aquarius season. Birthday was just all a week. Huh? So, guys. Yeah, tell them how old you are. 27. <sighs> okay. All right, guys. <laughs> we are out. Thank you for what? tuning in. And once again, I'm Sophie Joe. And I am Danny the Tall. And that's Nipsey on the floor. <laughs> we will see y'all in our next episode. Peace out. Ooh, to yeah. the